Hey guys, I'm thrilled to introduce you something truly special, the Vobot Mini Dock. Currently in its prototype phase and undergoing rigorous testing as we speak. This innovative docking station boasts a plethora of functions, features, and seamless app integrations. I'm thrilled to be one of the first to test it out and I can't wait to dive into all it has to offer. As per usual guys, we'll check its physical overview, features, and more. We'll tell you everything you need to know, coming up. Hey what's up guys, this is Mac and we do a lot of tech related videos like this one. If this is your first time, consider subscribing. With that said, let's begin. So what do we get inside the box? The docking station, obviously. A USB-C cable around 3 feet. And the manual. They also sent us a gamepad because you can emulate some games in the docking station display. But we'll talk more about that later. Now let's check out some physical overview. So the build is all plastic material with a semi-transparent texture. Underneath it has a rubber material to keep the docking station in place and we also have several ports. So this is the USB-C where you will connect your device. We also have a button over here and a rotating knob which works as a button as well. We will talk more about its functions as we go to the apps later. And on the other side, we have two more USB-C inputs. I'll put the specs on your screen for more info. At the back, we have another USB-C input, HDMI, Ethernet port, and a USB-A port. On the front, we have a clock and a 320x240 display. You'll notice a sleek screen coated with acrylic-like material. I must admit, I'm not particularly fond of it due to its tendency to accumulate micro scratches over time. I guess that's all for its physical overview, now let's check out some features. So this functions as a docking station, obviously, where you can plug different devices depending on what you need. Use it for file transfer, have an extra monitor without plugging the HDMI port to your GPU, fast charge your mobile phones or tablets, and use Ethernet port if you want to have an uninterruptible internet connection. This works very well for laptops and desktop that doesn't have Ethernet port. This docking station also works as a clock with this indication and has several built-in apps that we're going to discuss in a little bit. You can also integrate your own apps especially made for those app developers out there. Lastly, this works with mobile, tablet, PC, Mac, or Linux and needs an internet connection to make things work. So the setup is quite straightforward. Just plug the USB-C on the side to your device, then follow the instruction that's going to appear in its display, or just follow the manual for more info. After everything is connected to the same network, we can proceed to check the available apps. Now to navigate the apps, we are going to use this rotating knob and the button to go through the selection and select the apps that we are going to use. Let's check the first app. So this is the weather app and it shows an accurate temperature info of your specific location. By default, it is set to somewhere else so you have to set it in your own location accordingly. To begin, navigate to the settings, application settings, and once you are there, you will see this on your display. A QR code for you to scan using your phone's camera. Additionally, it shows an IP address that you can use to enter it into your browser so you can access the option in the PC. Now I'm going to use a PC for this demonstration and type the IP address on my browser so we can configure the weather app. As you can see, we can configure all the available apps here but let's start with the weather app first. So just type the required city, state, province, and country code and it will function as so. There's actually a link here so you can find yours so just apply them accordingly and click validate. In the to-do list section, you'll find an API that seamlessly integrates with an app on your PC or phone called Todoist. Upon applying this integration, it will display the task you've listed for the day or any other time frame specified within the app. In the stock, it's also the same. So if you are into stocks, just visit this link and search whatever you want to display on your mini dock. In the cryptocurrency app, just add the symbols accordingly and save config. After doing it so, it will display this on your mini dock. 
in the screen mirroring app, setting this up might be a bit complex for an average user. But I personally found it enjoyable to tackle the challenge. It's a reminiscent of the early 2000s when my brother and I used Windows 95 and delved into networking, figuring things out step by step. Anyway, I need a whole video to explain this topic so we won't go through it for now. Basically, what this does is to mirror the 320x240 resolution of your main display on the mini dock. You can also use Windows Virtual Display and mirror that screen accordingly, but I find this a bit glitchy for some reason. Well, it's still in the experimental phase so it is understandable. Now let's check out the fun part. The Game Emulator. Yes, you can play some old school games in this small display. So in the game management is where you can download the games accordingly and upload them in the docking station. Click this link and download any games that you desire. Extract it and upload. And this is where the controller comes in. I already downloaded some games so let's check it out. By the way, you also have a Now Playing app, where you can see what's currently in your music playlist. Only works in Bluetooth, unfortunately. Pomodoro app is where you can manage your time and focus. It basically gives you 25 minutes to work and 5 minutes rest time and it has an alarm system to remind you. It also has a calendar app, which works as it should, and a PC monitoring app where you can see your CPU, GPU, RAM and drive frequencies and also checks the PC's temperature. It's a bit inaccurate but the Vobot Mini Dock developers are working on this as we speak. They also told me that they plan to utilize ID64 on Windows to obtain more accurate PC monitoring data for display on this Mini Dock. We can't update this dock with the firmware releases that they will roll out. I may have to revisit this video for updates in the future. Another fantastic feature of this docking station is the ability to integrate with your own app. This makes it particularly appealing for app developers who can customize its own functionality to suit their needs. I was quite intrigued and attempted to connect the Python software with the docking station. However, despite of my efforts, I encountered some difficulties in establishing the connections. Upon reaching out to the Volbot developers, they apologize and inform me that the first generation units, which I have right now, have a particular issue with that connection. They also assured me that they are actively working on the solution in the second generation, which they will provide the channel for review in the near future. I am eagerly anticipating on that so make sure you subscribe if you are interested in seeing that update video. Now let's move into the conclusion and let's talk about the things that I like and don't like about the docking station. First, let's address the areas for improvement. The physical button placement is a key concern. Having it on the side proves inconvenient as it tends to disrupt the stability of the docking station when pressed. I believe relocating it on the top will greatly enhance the usability. Another is the USB data and charging inputs on the docking station should be positioned at the front for easier access. Having to flip the docking station to plug something in proves to be inconvenient. It is acceptable for inputs like the HDMI, Ethernet cable, and USB-C for PC connection to be located at the back since they remain stationary but for optimal usability, other inputs should be placed at the front. Another feature worth mentioning is the screen mirroring. While it is a valuable feature and can integrate with virtual displays, my experience with it has been inconsistent. Despite attempting it multiple times, I found it to be somewhat glitchy. Sometimes it's functioning as expected, while other times, not at all. As I have mentioned earlier, the developers are working on this so we just have to wait for the firmware update. It would be beneficial if the 320 x 240 docking station display could function as a standalone monitor. However, I am uncertain whether that is even possible. Maybe I'm asking too much, so um, forget about that. Lastly, the game emulator is enjoyable, and it would be even more so if we could incorporate sound into it. 
Considering the Promodoro app utilizes beeping sounds, I believe it's possible to implement sound for the game emulator as well, especially since this game uses MIDI music. Well, these are just my opinion, but to be honest, I'm just being picky. Anyway, now let's talk about the things that I love about this docking station. As someone passionate about PC, I enjoy keeping my eye on my system specification and performance via separate monitor. This PC monitoring app proves exceptionally useful, especially during gaming sessions. It allows you to effortlessly track your PC's performance without having intrusive monitoring numbers cluttering up your game screen. If you are invested in stocks and crypto, this gadget is a valuable addition to your setup. No longer you have to constantly visit the website to monitor fluctuations in numbers, this docking station takes care of that for you automatically as soon as you power on your PC. The to-do list app is quite beneficial as well. It aids in organizing your monthly or daily plans and allows to set reminders that will conveniently appear on the docking station. Previously, I relied on this sticky notes for reminders, but I believe I'll be using this docking station for managing my daily tasks. I also love the game emulator. It is quite enjoyable as it brings back a nostalgic feeling while gaming. Most of all, the app integration. I just hope we can get our hands to the Gentive Vobot Mini Docking Station so we can try the app developer feature. Well, there are many other features worth noting. For instance, the subtle time and day indicator. Not overly intrusive unlike the clock I have in my office, like this one. Additionally, the ports are highly appreciated providing comprehensive options including data transfer, charging, extra monitor, and internet connections available. Anyway, if you will ask me if I'll recommend this, well, that's definitely a yes, assuming the updated version will be up in their market. So if you want to know more about this prototype project, please visit the links in the description below. If ever we get our hands to the second generation, the video update will be on your screen, so don't forget to watch that. So that's it guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.